Hello, welcome to another How to Code Well web chat. My name is Peter Fisher, and in today's episode, I would like to discuss my top 10 programming mistakes. So this is going to be a list of the top 10 programming mistakes. Before I get into it, though, I would just like to say that um, even though this is a list, the list itself isn't in any particular order. It's very difficult to order these things because everybody is different. Everybody has a different programming style. Um, everybody is capable of different things in, in, in a different degree. So, for example, some people might be better at debugging than others um, or better at just identifying problems uh, quicker because they've had that level of experience um, more than others. So anyway, without further ado, this is my top 10 list. So starting in at number one, we have spelling mistakes. So personally, I'm dyslexic, so I often spell things incorrectly. Uh, I don't want to use the dyslexia as too much of an excuse Perhaps it's uh, it's laziness as well, uh, just rushing about and, and, and getting trying to get things done, um, much to my detriment. Uh, usually it happens when uh, a word has, uh, say, similar letters, similar looking letters, um, and say double L and an I, like the word spelling, for example. Um, or perhaps the uh, I, I I write the 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 word correctly, but it's the letters are themselves in a wrong order. Um, now this can become very problematic if you're if you're uh, writing the same variable out again and again and again, and in some cases they're spelled incorrectly, then the program is just not going to work. So that's uh, that's my top top one. So number two is naming things incorrectly. Now you might may have seen a meme floating about about um, one of the diff most difficult things that a developer does is decide on the definition, the name of of what it is that they're doing. Uh, so the name of a function, a name of a class, a name of an interface, name of a variable, and so forth. And it's partly true because it's it's quite a, it's a very important thing in programming. Um, uh, just as an example, let's say you were writing an, e an e-commerce shopping cart, right? And the, the shopping cart was selling uh, uh, trainers. Okay, so on your cart page, you had a variable called trainers, and that was a collection of trainers in the shopping cart. Fine. Okay, makes sense. Good. Well, what happens in, say, a month's time when the client says, well, actually, we do, we're not actually just tr selling trainers here. We're also sh selling shoe polish, um, insoles, and all of that kind of thing, laces, and stuff like that. And so your trainers variable now consists, is now an array in a collection of um shoe polish trainers and laces and so it's it doesn't define what it what the value actually is um now you can kind of you know you can move that to the nth degree i suppose and and then use that for naming classes right so if your class is named something that just just doesn't define what the class actually does then that's wrong okay same with inheritance same with abstraction same with even file names if you name the file name incorrectly um, so for example if you're I guess if you're writing event listeners right and your event listener is um, listening to um, a particular class or it acts upon a particular class maybe it's handling a particular class um, from an event and you've gone and name those incorrectly then you look at that and you go well y you know the event is called this and it's being fired or being triggered from that from that event um, but that event is named is it isn't actually what it is that they're doing. So yeah, it's it's very it's quite a challenge. It's quite a challenge to actually define and decide and draw a line under what what it is that, that these variables, these classes, these events should actually be called. Um, because you need to name them. That is something um, that other developers can just quickly understand. Going back to the trainer scenario where you've got this trainer variable, trainers variable that um, it perhaps is an array of your, your shopping cart, your products in your shopping cart. Maybe you should just call it products, right? Maybe you should call it items. You know, it's the, the, the cart items, right? And therefore you've, you, you've, you've, you've made it a little bit more generic. You've allowed yourself the ability to have different types of products within it because you've just called it products, right? If you're, if you, it's, if you're writing a website that was specifically for um, selling boats, for example, and you knew that was the only thing it was going to sell, then yeah, fine, okay. But just be very careful because 
Um, it might also sell um, the rigging, the sails, the, um, the oars, the anchors and all of that stuff. So you've got to be very careful as to how you name these things. Okay, uh, incorrect file names is my number three. So this, uh, this is where you've got your development environment set up um, and everything's working hunky-dory on your machine. And perhaps your machine is a different operating system to the, to the operating system that you're deploying to. And in certain cases, those operating systems will handle file names slightly differently. Some are more strict than others. So you could be deploying to, um, to an operating system that um, requires the files to be uh, named correctly. So uh, starts with an uppercase, starts with a lowercase, that kind of thing. Perhaps the operating system that you're de developing on, on your laptop or your desktop or wherever, um, is a little bit more lenient, right? It's, um, and you get this from Linux and Windows and Mac and, and so forth where, um, the application is a little bit more sort of flexible with human error. Um, so ensure that your file names are correct. Also going back to my second point where you've named things incorrectly, ensure that the file names themselves are good definitions of what, what the, what's actually included in the file, right? So with, um, with, with uh, inheritance and object-oriented programming, um, perhaps only having one file per class and then calling that file what the class is called. And then that means that way you've ensured yourself that you're not conflicting messages when you've given this to another developer and they've, they're, they're reading a, a, a controller class, but it, that controller also has a controller class for another class and so forth. And they're like, well, what on earth? You know what, what should this this file actually do what's its purpose and all of that stuff because it's actually doing lots of things um so um so yeah incorrect file names is my number three so number four is over abstraction now over abstraction is where you um think about the application too much and you're going too far down the line um and you're you're outside of the box you're so far outside the box that you can't even see the box anymore. Um, and you're you're writing so many delegators, invokers, events, and all of that kind of stuff. Those lovely listeners and everything, subscribers and so forth. Um, but it's not actually going to rapidly get your application up and running. And you you end up down the line you might think it's fantastic doing it right now because you've, you're, you're, you're future-proofing it, right? That's what you're thinking or doing. You're, you're um, thinking, oh, if I if instead of, instead of calling this trainers, I'm calling this products. Instead of calling it products, I'm calling it items. Um, and um, instead of having this this uh, this uh, self-made HTML form, I'm actually going to define what every um, input is in a class and have config and and all of that kind of lovely stuff. Then uh, it can get quite. It can con get in the future, in down the line, it can get very complicated to actually do something that you want. Um, you want to achieve, and doing the simplest thing like creating a form becomes a chore because you have to go through several layers of abstraction in order to do it, in order to achieve something that you could just do in about ten seconds, right? So instead of just doing input a normal HTML5 input right box, you have to actually declare it in some sort of fancy um, fancy manner. Now that fancy manner might be justified when that fancy manner was actually being uh, designed and, and so forth, but um, you need to think about um, for every time you abstract something, you're adding a layer of, of complexity. Some of that is justified, okay, I'm, I'm not, I'm not certainly not knocking abstraction abstraction is great um but you just need to use it in a sparse manner and in sort of in in a justified way um and um this goes for uh, the next point as well which is a uh, messy inheritance um so messy inheritance is where you're extending stuff to the nth degree so you've got an object and you've you've extended it so far that um that uh, it's it's completely lost sight as to what its original definition actually is. Um, an example, think of an example. Well, vehicles, right? So let's say you were uh, 
creating class that defines a uh, a boat. Let's use the boat analogy again. Um, but um, and all you were doing was just defining what the boat is, and you know, a boat has has a has an anchor and a set of oars and a sail maybe and all that or outward bo- outward board motor and all that fancy stuff um but you've gone and instead of cl- classing it as a boat you've actually gone and said well it's actually a vehicle um and you've actually defined what the vehicle is in the sense that all the materials that that vehicle can possibly use because down the line you think that maybe um instead of just having boats you also have cars and you have planes and you have trains and all of that stuff fine okay that's great if that's what you need um but um um it's not if 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 you don't need it if you need to do something rapidly if you need to get a product out um a project out window out the door sorry um quick then that's not what you need um right now the the whole just enough mentality and so forth um so also messy inheritance um, can come from underthinking as well as overthinking it because uh, underthinking it is like you know a rush job you know you've got you've got um, uh, a rush job on and then all you so what you do as a simple quick win um, cutting the corners type way is you just create a new class and you extend a subclass to that class because it's got some bits and pieces in it. Um, which might work fine, but you've gone and muddied the definition of what that that um, that sub that uh, concrete class actually does, right? So um, instead of doing it the proper way, creating a new class and injecting it in, or or or, or what have you, or writing it as an event um, and and creating some listeners and subscribers and all that kind of stuff, you've gone and just said, right, well, let's just 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 extend it to another thing and then have this uh, have this functionality. Um, that can lead to what's called uh, God classes. So a God class is like a class that just does everything, right? It's huge. It's ginormous. It has absolutely no definition. It has no no boundaries. Um, that isn't good because uh, it has so many um, influences on other areas of the application that it's very difficult to debug and test and prone, and it's very prone to error. Um, so don't have a god class. God classes are bad. So number six, syntax errors. Now you might think this should actually be number one. Uh, maybe, perhaps it should be. But syntax errors, in this sense, I want to talk about the small, little, pain in the ass syntax errors. The things that you just forget to do, like um, semicolons at the end of a of a um, of a SQL statement, right? So you run a SQL statement, but you don't actually execute it because you haven't actually put in the the, the end colon, or uh, mixing single quotes to double quotes, or um, like well like like the spelling mistakes, you know that kind of thing. The small little things that that you just overlook. Look, you can't actually necessarily see at a glance. <coughs> Excuse me, but it just yeah, you you run the code and it just coughs, um, and. Uh, my bugbear, I suppose, off the back of syntax errors are uh, stack traces that just don't give you any indication as to what is wrong. And usually that happens because of the abstraction, as I've mentioned before, and the inheritance. And you're like, where on earth? Just give me a goddamn line number all right, to have a look at and, 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 and so forth. So that's number six, syntax errors. Number seven is permission errors. So... You might have you might have your application all ready to go, hunky dory, on your local laptop, um, and you want to push it to production or staging or whatever, um, and you do it and it doesn't work, and you're like, well, why doesn't it work? And that's because, well, part could be because um, the uh, the files, the, the 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 directories don't actually have the right permissions to write to. So, for example, if you've got um, if you've got caching files, if you've got uh, logging files and all of that kind of stuff, uh, if you're uploading images, any kind of assets, any kind of binary stuff, um, you've got to ensure that the permissions are correct, set correctly. Usually the, you just find this out right at the last minute. Um, so uh, a, a, an easy way to get around this is to 
create yourself like a, a deployment setup script. Um, so I've mentioned before Capistrano. Capistrano has a really good um, uh, setup task that you can run and it just sets itself up, right? So it just creates uh, these, these directories and so forth. If you've done it correctly, if you set up your Capistrano um, recipe correct, then it will um, assign the right users to the right places and all, all sorts of lovely stuff. Um, and you can you can actually write um, uh, Bash in in there to to run Bash uh, setup scripts. So you can actually customize those that setup script for you. Um, so you know that whenever you go and deploy. Um, for the first, it's usually for the very first time, right? So you're deploying it for the very first time, and then it just doesn't work. You want to make sure that is 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 as streamlined as possible. So create yourself some custom um, uh, setup scripts, and then just run them randomly on 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 a, on a VPS. Just see, just to ensure that you can do it, um, and also ensure that you can do it to other operating systems because the permissions are slightly different in say Windows and in um, in Linux and so forth. So if you ever switch your deployment, then you need to um, adjust for that too. Okay, so uh, number eight, memory hungry loops. So this is where you've got a loop and the stuff inside the loop um, just consumes memory to the point where either the, the, the machine just dies or everything just becomes very 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 slow um, and the, the 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 loop itself isn't structured in such a way that um, that uh, flushes the 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 memory allocation as it goes and um, perhaps it's doing a lot of incrementing a lot of counting uh, um, maybe you're doing something that uh, runs through a, ser a data set a very large data set and it's doing some adjustments to um, say a user accounts um, uh, record, right? So it's tidying up data. So it's it's fetching, it's saving, it's updating, it's all doing all those crazy stuff, and it's doing it per user. So you need to ensure um, that um, that uh, if you rerun it, then it will it will um, I want to say self heal, but what I mean is by that is like if you've already if you run it again over the same data set. And you've already adjusted half of the data set, right? That you, you're not going to affect that data set again. Perhaps having some sort of if statement. So if you've actually done the work, done the action, then skip over it, that kind of stuff. You don't want to be in a situation where you are having to do a lot of fetches and a lot of a, a lot of um, SQL um, queries just to find out that you don't actually have to touch this one. Um, one account. Perhaps you need to do use caching. Perhaps you need to, um, uh, yeah, put it in like a uh, these things in a session. Do it by ID. That kind of stuff. Um, also, these the select queries can just hammer the hammer the um, uh, just hammer the database. And so you you find that your 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 loop is perhaps not the problem it's the actual query that you're you're doing and because you're doing it within the loop it's it's becoming tenfold of a problem um maybe uh taking a step back and thinking about doing it as like an in an in query so if you've got a, a series of of ids that you want to perform an action on then do it in an in query do it in a single query to get all of those that data back don't just do a find by id um, because you get a you know death by a thousand cuts right, and usually when you're developing these things right, and you've got these uh, you you have this need to tidy up a lot of data in a data set. Well, you're going to take por a portion of that data set into your local device right, so in your local environment, and you're going to run a test against that, and you're going to go okay yeah that's fine good. But because you haven't actually used the whole data set, maybe you can't even access the whole data set. You don't actually know whether or not this script is going to fully execute and everything is going to be fine. Um, it could get to, say, the hundredth, thousandth account and then decide to fall over. And it could decide to fall over because of the memory. Um, it could be um, a problem with the database. Maybe you're, you're making too many connections, that kind of thing. Uh, but you need to be you need to be aware of that, right? So you need to try and replicate the data 
locally and run the script, find out how long it's going to take, find out if there's any sort of um, performance improvements that you can make to the script. Um, because when you're running, um, wh when you're doing a, a cleanup task and you're, you've got several thousand records to clean up, the smallest performance gain is 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 uh, is important because that is then you know it can be increased um, depending on the amount of data that you're having to flush through. Anyway, so number nine, incorrect operators. <clears throat> so this is where you've uh, you've incorrectly just said, look, it's a it's a less than rather than an equal, rather than a greater than, or you're you're checking for false rather than checking for true, or perhaps your data is null when it should be um, should have something in it, and you've got your operators in the wrong order. Um, also, when you're using things like the word and instead of ampersand. So they have um, different, um, uh, I think they call it the the uh, order precedence. So it's the um, the the way in which the the operators work, the order in which they um, override each other. Okay, so if you so using the word and in an if statement is different from using the word using the symbol and and like or an and ampersand, right? Um, ampersands, I think, are actually higher than the word and. Um, so you need to ensure that. Also, um, bod mass. So um, <coughs> brackets, um, brackets first, right? So do everything in your brackets first, and then uh, and then have like an and 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 then another series of brackets, um, and then evaluate those as true or false and so forth. So they return a boolean if whatever is in the brackets have. Um, you know, if, if 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 whatever in the bracket has actually you know come true, then that bracket itself will be true, and then you so and so you're checking that bracket and the other bracket and so forth. Um, so bod mass, bod mass is quite important. Um, if you get this wrong, then your application is going to go in a direction that you didn't you didn't uh, uh, first anticipate. So uh, this is very important. Now, number 10, number 10, last but certainly not least, is self-doubt. So in every in every industry, there is an element of self-doubt, whether you're um, adequate enough to do the task at hand. And all of the things that I've listed above, all the nine things that I've listed above, just knock your confidence when it goes wrong. So spelling mistakes. A big confidence hit for me um, when I run something and it's spelt wrong. You know, it's a simple, stupid schoolboy error. Um, same with naming things incorrectly. If you're, if you've got an application and you and you've gone and named it wrong, named a variable wrong, and down the line you need to change it, then that can actually be quite a lot of work because it could be named wrong in several places. Um, incorrect file names will just, you know, just cause things to just break um, over abstraction and, and messy inheritance really you've got to just sort of um, I guess, I guess you, you, it, it, you just got to become aware of it and then just sort of draw a line under it and say right this thing, thing needs to be re redesigned okay so syntax errors the smallest ones are the pain the, the most painful ones because they're the least obvious and uh, these can really hit your confidence because you're like, you know, I've looked at this for the past two hours or half a day and I can't find the problem. Um, and then, you know, you, you, you uh, F and Jeff and then you um, storm out the office uh, or you cry <laughs> and then you come back the other day, the next day, and, and then you, you find the single issue that fixes your problem. And you're left thinking, why on earth didn't I think of that first? Why didn't I look at that file first? Why didn't I find that issue first? Um, and also all of these things really have uh, an impact to your confidence. And if I may give some advice, it's really, um, and, and really I need to uh, take my own advice because I'm pretty bad at this anyway, is um, when... When you're working on something and you're so engrossed in that thing and it's going wrong in the sense that there is a bug and you can't find that bug, try and try and give yourself a time limit. 
try and say, well, I'm not going to, uh, if I can't fix this within the next hour, then I'm going to do something else. I'm going to do another task. I'm going to, um, if you're working on a website and you've got a problem in the model layer, I'm going to work on the view layer or the controller layer. I'm still working on the application, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying, I'm doing something else. I'm, I'm, I'm perhaps running a couple of unit tests. I'm writing unit tests. I'm doing something that is, that I know is achievable. Okay. Then when you come back to the application, <coughs> excuse me, then when you come back to the application, because you're still using the application, your mind is still sort of in the same zone. You might be able to quickly identify the problem. Um, but likewise, if you're working for more than a couple of hours, then you really need to take a step back, get out of the office, get out outside, look at a at, 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 uh, faraway object and just sort of do something completely offline and then come back. Fresh eyes is 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 uh, very important. Fresh uh, having a fresh look at the system. Um, and also, don't be afraid to ask if you've got if you're in a room full of devs and you can't spot a problem then um, then ask, just say, look, can you have a look at this for me? Because it's driving me crazy. They might suggest something, right? They might suggest a way of debugging it that you haven't thought of. For example, they might tell you where the logging files are. They might tell you how to uh, use the debugger step over in, in, a, in a way that you haven't, you haven't used before. Um, they may have had the same issue and, uh, and uh, they might be able to quickly um, uh, identify what the issue is. Um, yes, you will come away from that perhaps feeling that you are you are not as good as them, and um, and I guess that's correct in that sense because um, they you know it, it, in in the life of the race then they found the issue first. But it's important to find the issue, right? Regardless of who found the issue, the issue needs to be solved. And, um, so yeah, that's where I want to leave it. Okay, so uh, I can I can talk about the imposter syndrome uh, until I go blue in the face, but um, I'm going to leave that for now because that's uh, that, that, that there's uh, elements of psychology in that that uh, perhaps aren't for this video. So that's my top ten programming mistakes. As I said before, this isn't in any particular order. If you think that there is a, a mistake in this list, then do let me know in the comments below. If you have uh, uh, something that um, you want removed or added to this list, then uh, please let me know. You can follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is at PFWD. Thanks again for watching, and I'll speak to you again soon. Cheers. Bye.